Well, it's great to see you guys. Uh, you know, it's been a, a week or so. Um, we are uh, really excited uh, tonight uh, about the selection, about uh, the seed, the seeding. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been a long week for us. It's been a great week for us because we've been able to sort of uh, shut down a little bit mentally and physically and, uh, you know, rest up. But we have practiced. Uh, but it's been kind of a weird week just because, you know, we've been really prepping for no one. Um, I thought today our energy level had picked up just because of tonight, knowing that, uh, you know, uh, come tomorrow, where we at least we have an idea of um, potential teams that we may be playing, and so um, you know we're once again grateful. You know, it's um, there's only 68 teams that get selected year in and year out, and uh, you know to to be selected first, but also to, uh, to get that number one seed, which has never happened uh, in this program, is. Um, you know, both thrilling, but uh, you know we're very humbled by it and just grateful uh, for the opportunity that's ahead of us. Questions for Dutch? Terry, I mean, how, how did you tailor maybe the last week or so in terms of balancing wanting some rest and, sure. and sort of you know refocusing with I imagine maybe just working on yourselves without an, an opponent to prepare for? Well, there were certainly some things that you know we needed to um, you know uh, we identified going into this week's. Um, practice that we we had to we had to talk about and we had to rep and we had to prep for um, and just uh, really improve um, and um, and and that's coming off of you know the Iowa and certainly in the even in the big big ten uh, you know things that uh, going down the road here that we uh, expect we'll we'll see and um, so it was a great week for us to um, to uh, work on uh, things, uh, certainly us, both offensively and defensively, get some rest. They weren't near as long in duration. I tried to make it short and intense. Um, and so that's sort of how we approached it um, all week was, uh, but, but uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. It was a challenge, I think, for these guys um, to, to come in every day and um, get excited about, you know, just, our improvements and what we were asking them to do, but um, they, they handled themselves in the in the right kind of way. And I, like I said, I thought today they were, uh, you know, really really good in terms of getting their focus uh, on track. Tyler, coach, um, was wondering if you just have any favorite stories about Chloe Moore McNeil. Um, any kind of memories that stick in, stick out in your mind about her? If not, just how would you kind of describe her? Oh, Chloe. Um, you know, Chloe, when she first arrived here in Bloomington, I won't make this a really long story, but you, she, she arrived here in COVID. Uh, and most of you don't know that about her. And so, you know, she's, um, you know, a kid coming from West Tennessee, uh, you know, probably hadn't been out of Tennessee most of her life. And, you know, she travels, you know, comes three, three and a half, four hours to Bloomington and is in a place where, you know, she, she knows a few people. Uh, we are obviously become her instant family, but, um, you know, it was really a challenge for her uh, that, that first season, uh, not being able to go home. She has three little uh, sisters at home that she, she cares for and loves deeply and, and likes to see them as well. Um, I, I think one of the things, I don't have as many stories as I, I just think about her character uh, and some of the things that she's had to endure, you know, losing her mother at a, at a young age um, and then, you know, probably some other obstacles, but then, you know, arriving in college and then not being able to go home. Um, and so the thing that sticks out when I think about Chloe is her pure toughness. I mean, this is a kid that's resilient, but I think that's, I can't overstate it, and it's one of those intangible things that you, that don't show up on a stat sheet on a paper, it's just how tough uh, Chloe is. Um, not just as a person, but certainly, uh, you know, as a, as a competitor, as a player. Um, we ask her to, to guard the other teams, as you guys know, uh, best offensive player. Uh, and we, and there's a lot of really good ones in this league. And so to, to be able to show up every night for her team uh, in the way that she has, I think just speaks to who she is um, as a teammate, as a person. But I think one of the, her, her greatest characteristics that she has is her toughness. And, um, you can't quantify that. You just, you just, when you have the pleasure of coaching her and these guys uh, playing with her, um, it, you know it. That you're, 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 you're playing with somebody that one you can depend on, um, and that um, she's going to give you every ounce 
of, of toughness that she, she has. Uh, for Mac and Grace, uh, just being a number one seed, I guess you've spent, you guys have spent a lot of time this season near the top of the polls, but I guess just what's the feeling like sitting here on Selection Sunday and seeing Indiana pop up on the top line? Yeah, I, I think it's kind of surreal, um, you know, just I think it's really cool to see different teams getting those one seeds now and just being in those those top ten top five teams just because, you know, in years past it's been pretty consistently the same team. So now to see just how much the game has grown and to see all these, you know, different teams, Utah, LSU up there in the rankings has, has been really cool to see. Is there anything you want to add to that? No, I think she, she hit it on the head. <laughs> Skip. Uh, Grace, you've uh, you've allowed your your play to speak for you uh, largely through the last several years. It seems like uh, you, you've been more quiet and reserved uh, in the press conferences. But is this the moment right now? Is this moment where you've been revealed as a as a number one seed in the NCAA tournament that you've culminated for o o over the last few years in helping to build this program? I mean, talk about just the elation right now. Yeah, I mean, um, we you know we had a pretty good idea that that we'd be um, probably a one seed, but I think to actually see it, um, you know, on the big screen, actually see that 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 number one next to our name. I mean. Um, it's something that, that looking back on it, you know, I never, you know, might not have thought was possible. So, um, you know, it's really, you know, special, um, like I say all the time, just to see where we came from when I, you know, first got here um, in 2018 to where we are now. Um, it's definitely, you know, one of those moments where it um, kind of feels surreal. For any of you, um, is there any advantage in your mind in not just knowing your first weekend venue but your second weekend venue and, and I know you don't want to think too far ahead in terms of you're not going to look past opponents but just knowing that if you do get through the first weekend you know with all certainty where you're going the second weekend yeah I think we're excited uh you know I don't think um and again nothing against Seattle uh that's a long trip you know um and so I think we're thrilled with uh you know where where our you know if we can uh play well enough um here in Bloomington in front of our fans uh, and we can get to that second weekend. I think we're very thrilled uh, with the thought of, you know, where we're being sent. Um, and so I don't know how these guys feel, but I think a great dose of sunshine is, you know, hopefully uh, in our future, we hope. So. We got a question in the back. Oh, oh, Ari's got it, and then a question in the back. Sorry. This is for any of you. How nice is it for, did, uh, I did of this research earlier, the lowest combined number, the men had a two and the women had a six and 83 and eight. The other combined numbers have been almost double digits. So how nice is it, you know, to have a combined number of five, you know, the men are a four, you guys are a one to have that combined number of having two teams that are so strong this year to have, you know, two teams with legit aspirations with you and them. I'm say, it, it, I, I am not, I'm gonna pass on that. I, I, math was not my strong suit in, in high school or in college, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna pass to Mac or Grace yeah. for that. Uh, Can you comment about just the men being in the tournament. Oh, so that would have been way easier to ask. Are we excited about our men? Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, you know, this is uh, what Indiana basketball is, right? Our tradition uh, is, is, is uh, you know, on both sides with men's and women's basketball. And, um, you know, to, to have, um, you know, our men playing uh, also in the field of 68 is, um, is, you know, certainly, I know it's the expectation, you know, for Hoosier Nation, for our fans. And so, uh, I think everybody should be excited about that, you know, both, both programs right now are delivering on, uh, you know, what everybody expects us to do year in and year out. And that's, uh, you know, get to the big, be playing in March. How about that? So we're excited. Uh, Terry, uh, I have a calculus problem for you next. I'm just kidding. It's like uh, eight, five, what? <laughs> no, but uh, just to uh, see what this program has done, you talked about you know the one seed and mm -hmm. the regular season title, but earlier you talked about there's still more levels that this 
team can reach. Sure. Does that add excitement for you as a coach, knowing that there's still so much more that this team can build? Oh, on no doubt. You know, we talk about it all the time. Uh, you know, this will we'll never arrive. And um, and our, our our players know this. Um, and, uh, you know, we go into every practice um, with a plan of especially the areas that we know we have to improve on. And, and there's a lot. Um, and so, uh, you know, we try to 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 uh, really mix up what we do day in and day out. Um, you know, because we know there's a there's there's no ceiling really. I mean, we we just have whether it's uh, you know on the defensive side of the ball, um, whether it's you know offensively, uh, how we're going to attack you know pressure uh, in the future. Um, you know, because that's going to happen down the down the road. We know that uh, whether what, what we're going to do and how we're going to handle ourselves against a great zone team um, because now once you get into the field it's you know you're playing different opponents you know not that it's ever easy in the big but you can you know sure enough you know a little bit of tendencies when you're inside of conference play but um, yeah you know I've always said this about this group because of the balance because of the talent uh, because of their competitiveness um, how business like that they approach uh, each game that uh, you know the sky's a limit for this group it really is uh, they, they can accomplish whatever they set their minds to um, and um, you know our job as coaches and our staff we just try to help them and, and prepare them as well as we can but ultimately you know we know that uh, you know the, the 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 resume that we've put together are is is because of the these guys the players that uh, you know compete in between the lines and you know they're responsible for the number one seed uh, <clears throat> Terry, to McKenzie's point about how, you know, different number one seeds and some different teams are kind of rising to challenge those powerhouses. How have you seen that develop in the game, the women's game over the years? And, and I guess, too, what does it say about the development and growth of the game over the years? Well, I think it's great. You know, uh, let's let's think back about it, 2018 when Virginia Tech was here, right? And we played them in the WNIT championship. And so, uh, you know, it's a different team, just like Indiana is a different team that you don't really see, you know, as a number one seed. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the parity, uh, you know, I answered this question earlier today. Um, I, I think it's so great for women's basketball, you know, and uh, I think it's great for uh, fans that are – women's basketball fans that, um, you know, I think have, have really been waiting, you know, for this moment in time where, and, and no offense to those other, you know, schools, the, the, the Stanford's and the South Carolina's uh, that, you know, traditionally and the Yukon's that are, you know, show up. Um, all terrific programs and to sustain and be able to do what they have been able to do is is unbelievable but um, yeah I think it's really great for our game that there you know there are other teams now um, that um, you know are um, you know are I think that every it's changed everything and uh, I think it's really I can't tell you how, how good I think it is for our game um, as a whole one more question in the room and then we'll take any zoom questions if you guys want to go ahead and raise your hand if there's any questions on zoom go ahead in the back a uh, question for grace uh I drove up from Louisville. I know there's been people that have just been already reaching out. Uh, just what's that excitement like to be able to play in Assembly Hall where I'm sure family and friends will be able to drive up to see you play? And uh, just for this, I guess, last go around, what does it mean to you to try to have uh, some special memories? Yeah, it's it's been great um, just to see um, people that I haven't seen in years from Louisville uh, make the, the two-hour drive up up to Bloomington to support, you know, um, not only myself, but but our team and our program, um, and they've been great. So, um, you know, I was I was really fortunate to come from a place um, for as much as Indiana loves basketball, um, Kentucky, you know, loves it loves it just as much. So maybe not just as much, but <laughs> second best. So, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I you know, I grew up around the game. So um, just to see that uh, support from from the local community, um, even as a Hoosier, has been really special for me. All right, we'll go to Zoom questions. Drew, go ahead. Hey, Coach Drew Bonham with the Portland Press Herald. Uh, I was hoping that, I mean, I talked to you earlier in the season about, uh, about McKenzie's play and just kind of the progression you've seen from her. And it just seems like every time I, I, I talk to you, it's, you know, she's gone from an impact player of the team to an impact player of the conference and now with the Defensive Player of the Year and the All-American status. Just talk about the level that she's reached and the caliber of player that she has become. 
Well, you know, she's had an unbelievable year, uh, but McKenzie would be the first uh, one to tell you that, um, you know, as we always as we always say, there's there's always room uh, for improvement. And, um, you know, no one has worked harder or as hard. Uh, I got Grace Berger here as well, um, as these two have on their game. And, um, you know, one of the things about being a part of our program is we t always talk about, you know, you have to do more than, than what is required. Uh, and these, these two have, um, you know, been so great in just helping us uh, with the culture that we've created here with this idea that uh, the only way that, uh, you know, this is going to work is that if you decide and to come in and you do the work on your own with your, um, your uh, you know, your coach, uh, your position coach. And, you know, Mac has, uh, even on her off days, you know, there's usually a ball bouncing down there and whether it's shooting free throws, uh, Mac has committed herself, uh, has changed everything about from her eating habits to, uh, you know, uh, just everything. Um, and, um, and, you know, right, she's right in, in front, you know, has become in front of our eyes, just this um, awesome, talented uh, post player that uh, I would put up against anybody in the country. Kevin, go ahead. Kevin Vera, are you still on there? Yep, there he is. Uh, this is for Mackenzie and Grace. So, uh, looking back at last year, obviously you guys made it up all the way to the Sweet 16, but what can you guys, with that experience, what can you guys take into this tournament and what did you just pretty much learn um, from last year? Yeah, I think that any chance you get to play um, in the high-level games that we play in helps you later on down the season for the tournament. So we played in a, in a good non-conference, and obviously the Big Ten is, I think, the best conference in the country. So we're going against um, tournament-ready teams every single night. So I think that that helps us along with um, our past experiences in the tournament as well. Seth? Terry, when you, you talked about you know getting I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you talked about getting right mentally and physically over the last week, and I know at, at the end of the Big Ten tournament run, you mentioned just you guys were a little bit nicked up. Mm -hmm. How are you all doing physically, and especially Keandra, who had that, that injury uh, up in Minneapolis? Yeah, you know, I think we're feeling, um, I think the, the, this, the time off, the rest has really been, um, you know, it's a very, first of all, we play in a very physical league. Um, and so um, it's as much physical as it, uh, or mental as it is physical for us, uh, just because of how we prep and we put so much on these guys. Um, but, um, you know, KB, uh, I, I think is, you know, from what uh, she's she's been to the doctor, uh, we feel like we're just dealing with, with sore muscle. Um, so we don't, we don't think that, um, you know, it's anything of significance, not that, uh, you know, uh, that doesn't mean that she's she um, probably you'll see her this weekend in terms of playing. Um, I think she will be out another you know maybe a couple weeks and then she'll be reevaluated right now. But um, she is um, you know she has not been practicing with us, uh, but she has been in practice. And so I guess the answer to your question is I think the the news that we got is probably the best case scenario for the the shot that she took to that hip. Um, from Mackenzie and Grace, what, what all just do you remember about Chloe when she got here as a freshman and just what sticks out to you in terms of how she, how she has grown to now? Um, I mean, like Coach said earlier, she was always, you know, really mature, um, really smart, really competitive. And I think you could tell that um, early on in her freshman year, even when she maybe wasn't, you know, uh, getting a, a ton of time on the court, she was really um, competitive and contributing in practice. Like almost like an upperclassman. Um, so um, she's been, you know, it's been, you know, really special for me um, kind of seeing her um, from when she first came here to, to where she is now, um, obviously being, you know, taking on that leadership role um, and just being super confident on the court um, and um, just just improving um, every area of our game. So um, just seeing the hard work she's put in to get to the, where, the point where she is now, I think it's been super special. I mean, I think Grace hit it on the head. Um, she was definitely really quiet when she first came in, but just getting to know her um, has been such a blessing, and being teammates with her has been a blessing. And I think she's just proof that, um, you know, if you work really hard every day and you trust the process and stick to the process, you'll reap the benefits of it. And I think that Chloe is just an outstanding example of that, going from being a player her freshman year with very 
limited minutes, you know, didn't get in most games to a second team Big Ten pick is just incredible. I think we laugh at her every day just because of her accent. I mean, if you get a, any time to <laughs> be around over her, it, though. right? She's sick of it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's she. Yeah. So. Now, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, she'll say stuff like that. That's that pretty good, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 So, okay. Uh, Mackenzie, how are you feeling physically? And then for both you and Grace, how did you guys balance the trying to stay sharp and working and also resting and recovering ahead of the tournament? Yeah, I think we've all just been really trying to get healthy, um, feeling good again. Uh, you know, that Big Ten season is no joke. So um, afterwards, I think we all just kind of took a deep breath and tried to get ourselves feeling good again. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I missed a lot of time, so my body's probably a little fresher than it normally is at this time of the year. So, um, I, I, I mean, I felt great.